And that's how we should be on this program. That's why the number, I'll give the number out so people can call in with their experiences. So I don't have to talk so much, but I, you know, I have a lot to say. But I can, when I hear someone expressing some gratitude or some wonders of, 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 of um, recovery, sudden recovery, gradual recovery, and all the things that are, um, with, go with it, there is always a little opportunity for me to uh, dot in there and add a little um, bonus. These little bonuses, these little bits of information, um, are, are sometimes, well, not often, not sometimes, nearly always, the difference between life and death. My search for a good doctor took me six years. And so that was how hard it was to find one for me. And uh, But there's reasons for it. And I assure you that they're not easy to find. Most are not good anymore. There used to be a time when men were, and women, mostly men in those days, were selected for their character and their and their values, like so many other things, but now, not so. Uh, and there's other reasons which I may or may not share with you this evening, but that's my own, own personal experience, and if, that, if they can do that to me and what was done to me over the years, as uh, sure as hell they can do it to you. I survived the medical matrix, as my son can witness and my family can witness. So, but also survived by not learning how who not to go to. And that takes a certain awareness that I've developed over the years from suffering, from suffering otherwise, thinking I was putting my hands, self in the hands of, you know, doctors I, I understood as doctors, not just people who are just making payments on their Mercedes or whatever it is, have strange ambitions and, and, you know, two minutes and a pill, two minutes and a pill. Uh, the doctors I went to spent two hours with me, and their and their offices were empty. There's just a few people there. Very well known doctors, only just a few patients, and get paid from Medicare and all the rest of it, same as everybody else. And if it doesn't get paid much, so you could be surprised how little they get paid. But never mind, instead of, you know, having as many people flow through the, the, the office as possible and then collect the money, these people didn't work for money. They work for the love of their profession. And that's why they, they just, focused on just a few people who appreciated them for this. Just imagine two hours just you know, figuring me out and letting me talk, letting me help. This is something you don't get anymore, see. But they, but they didn't make much money. They don't make much money. The doctor said to me, you know the operation I did on you today? We only got $600 for it. That's a three-hour operation. And he said, you know how much you used to get for that in 1980? $2,200 in 1980. Oh, God knows how much that is. But see, that's, that's, look what's happening. See, but never mind. He said, "Good doctors have a hard time surviving because they're good, but the others, they, they have their own way of, you know, um, you know, pill, you know, um, injection, and pill injection, pill injection, and then op operation, and so on." So they spend very little time with you, and you can't possibly know what's wrong with you. Can can't possibly help you, only make you worse. And, you, and, and so, like you have money with money with the school system makes it worse. So the bigger the medical profession gets these days, the worse you, worse service there is. We'll be right back. The foundation of human understanding teaches an observation exercise, often called meditation, which permits you to become objective toward your problems and allows your heartaches, bad habits, fears, and anxieties to be completely eliminated from your life without effort on your part. Until you have begun to practice this exercise, much of what you see and hear on the following program may be shocking and upsetting to you. But if you will listen calmly and with an open mind, you may discover the key to the peace of mind and joy for which you've been searching all of your life. And now from the foundation of human understanding, 
Here is Roy Mess. Okay, now let's explore what's happening today in our society. Um, let's see, I've been on the air for 49 years. This is my 49th year, and I've predicted precisely the circumstance. I told my wife mm, 40 years ago that one day America may become uninhabitable and may have to move to other countries or move from state to state. And I gave her the reasons, and I've, for, through the years I've given you the reasons. I said you cannot conquer a noble people, and so you can only be conquered from within, and you have been. And you don't know what to do about it, but I can help you. Now, for instance, Rush Limbaugh, I said four many years ago, he should take, with, with all his ramblings, which are very good ramblings, by the way, I, I have no criticism for what he says, but he should have done what Glenn Beck is doing now. He should have energized the people and and organized them, like like the uh, community organizers, you know, of uh, oh, what do they call them, the uh, what do they call that. Um, I can't remember the name of the community organizer that that represents Obama, but you know what I'm talking about. Acorn. That's a private army. Did you know that? You know where that money went to? Uh, Acorn. You think it goes for you know, for helping people? No, it goes for guns. You see, what you don't realize, and what I've been trying to tell you over the years, and have prepare you for it, hoping that in the preparation, it wouldn't come to this. But I didn't get the support. Uh, the tendency for us human beings is to live with a head in the sand and to avoid the, uh, things that are coming down the pike. You see, if we can't handle small things, it's, you know, reacting and overreacting to things is how the enemy advances from within. And so th there are several books written. I was talking to my doctor friends this evening, and um, he said there were several books written, and I, don't, I didn't write down the names, but, but I know that I've written these books myself, why the world is ruled by the lowest forms. It's, I keep saying over again, we are ruled by obsequious dummies, and I have many lectures on that subject over the years. Why are we always ruled by the, the low lowlifes? Why is that? Um, but if you look at your own household, you know the, the, the meanest, the slyest, the rottenest, yeah, the most ambitious, the cruelest, the, the most judgmental and hateful. They always rule in a home. And... Why did they do that? Well, there's a war going on between, you know, good and evil war. And it, this war has been fought for thousands of years. Yeah. It's mostly fought in families. And, and the war continues from generation to generation. The Bible calls it the war, the worm that dieth not. It transfers. The spores, the seed of it, transfers from one generation to another. Well, we need to talk about these things because it's the weakness. It is the weakness that comes from one generation to another. It slips into us. And we repeat the same mistakes over and over again. And always the, the most, the lowest rule. Why? Because they've discovered, uh, the, the lowest forms of life have discovered that if they use intimidation, uh, that the higher form of life um, is impressed, falls to it. It's very simple. It's a very simple technique that by which this country was destroyed. Intimidation, if you've looked very carefully at the the um, the campaigns, how the, 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 the Sarah Palin was treated. Just look at that one issue. Is she a beautiful woman or not? And why would they vilify her like that, degrade her, and say all manner of false things against her? See, because of well, what 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 they are trying to achieve? They're trying to create a a perception shell around her so that you don't see her as she really is, but the way they want you to see her. And people like myself, I have to tell you that um, I have the privilege of being demoralized and degraded. But I wasn't demoralized and I wasn't degraded because I'm sort of prepared for it. And my background experience has brought me a long way and it's part of my survival kit but in the early 60s I, if 
found myself being uh, uh, demoralized, just like you saw happen to Bush and, and Sarah Palin and all the others that had some value uh, to varying degrees, and, and Sarah Palin, I think, the highest on the list. But why would they see her as evil? Why would they build up li tell lies? This is, these are the lowest forms of life, and the lowest forms of life are infected with the seed that dieth not, the worm that dieth not. It's in your Bible. And uh, it, you're, the story of Garden of Eden is all about that, isn't it? It's like Adam was a bright natured person. He was required to make a choice. After all, how can a human being become human as, anim and be as animals just yeah. subject to the earth and the instinct of the animal? No, we are, we are, we are distinguished from animals by conscience.